Hello and welcome to the show. For today's Hot Wheels Showdown, we have got a boat. Very much a boat. This, the uh, regalia from Final Fantasy. Personally, I've never played Final Fantasy, don't particularly know the car, but or whenever Forza gives me a new and something a bit different vehicle to drive, it would be rude not to try and take it round a silly circuit, hence why we are going to uh, take on the Hot Wheels track. I'm not expecting amazing things from this car. It's far too big, far too heavy, and I don't know how much power the engine's going to get. I assume it's going to get up into S1 class. It starts off at, uh, at A class. You can't swap the engine out uh, of the vehicle. Uh, can we get... Uh, we can get Forza Aero on the... <laughs> it looks very weird with the Forza Aero on the front and the wing. The wing's not really mighty enough to go with the rest of the car. The rest of the car is so big that uh, <laughs> the Forza Aero is, is just, just not, uh, not spectacular enough. Tires. We can get the race compound tires. Don't actually put us up into S1 class yet. Hopefully, it will have big tires. Uh, they're 300s to begin with. So three two fives at the front are lovely. Three two fives at the rear. Yeah, that's that's pretty good in terms of uh, in terms of tire tire widths. But again, there's so much more car that uh, there is to kind of move around. Now, I'm fairly, fairly confident that we're probably going to get every upgrade on this car and it not get to the top of S1 class, so I'll stick all of these bits on while we are here. I don't think we're going to be able to get the power-to-weight ratio needed. But we will, we will see. We definitely want some nice race brakes. We want some uh, race suspension. Curious to see how this vehicle does on the landing of the jumps. The heavy cars have often bounced around on the landings, and that might be something we see here. But we'll have to wait and see. We can get £1,200 out of the car, gets it down to a mere 4300 So almost twice the weight of the uh, the Holden. A lot of the very quick cars that have got have been around the £2,500 mark. So now we throw power at it and hope for the best. Ideally, I mean, we're going to need one and a half thousand horsepower out of this. Judging by the amount that it's going up at the moment, it's not going to get one and a half thousand horsepower. Uh, it's probably going to... It's a centrifugal supercharger on the... Well, okay. Okay, that's interesting. I wasn't quite expecting... Okay, that's a lot of power from the centrifugal on this, but it's going to top out, but it's not going to get the power you might expect. What is the engine? It's a 7.2 litre whatever it is in this car. I don't actually know what engine it comes with. I would guess V8, maybe? Um, I might actually go back, because I do want... I want all the power I can get. We can forgo clutch. Don't care about that. Gearbox, as long as we can adjust the ratios, we'll do drop down to that. Uh, we might keep that. We'll see if we if if that one PI can get us more power. Cause we're gonna need we're gonna need all the power we can get in this bloody car because it is going to be over overweight really. Uh, do we go the ten horsepower? I might go for the ten horsepower and the torque. We might be able to shave some of the weight off somewhere else. We'll have a look just in case. Um, yeah, engine wise, no bloody clue because if we back out of all of this, we will install the setup. If you go into Forza Vista. The engine is uh, weirdly mounted. <laughs> it's very, very... Either, uh, in fact, while I am here, I might as well have a quick look. It's Okay, so it says it's front engine. It's front engine all-wheel drive. So the engine isn't in the back, but if you go in Forza Vista and you open... Well, where the... Where the bonnet would be, there's storage. It looks like the engine's kind of like in the side panels. It's very, very weird. Very actually. Wait, hold on. Can we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? No, I'm trying to figure out if they're like exhausts coming out the side, and if they are exhausts, then it's either a V. 14 or maybe a V60. A V16 would probably make more sense, but one I haven't can't see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, I've miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it might be a V16. <laughs> in this, assuming that they are exhausts coming out of there, which I guess they possibly would be. Where does the exhaust actually come out of the car? Uh, then at the back, it's got triple exhaust. So I guess they could run out the sides and then go underneath. Possibly? I don't know. <laughs> Somebody might know. Somebody might know. This is kind of my bit of detective work uh, going on here, but I don't quite know how the engine sits together when there's, well, that much car in between it. 
seems a little bit seems a little bit weird. Maybe it's like two separate straight eights at the side. I, your guess is probably as good as mine. We're <laughs> it's a peculiar car, and I'm going to get around a Hot Wheels track because that makes perfect sense. Well, the uh, HMS Regalia is ready to take on the Hot Wheels circuit. I am a little bit concerned, however, because uh, while we've got eight gears and gear ratio-wise should be okay, our top speed it only reckons is 177. But I think the aerodynamics of this car is so awful, we might have trouble. We might have trouble. The acceleration is 2.5 seconds to 60. That's very, very quick, but I think we might have no top-end speed at all, and uh, that's going to be a problem. I mean, the power-to-weight ratio on this car is pretty bad. It's up there with the likes of the Jeep, with the Bentley and so on, in that it can't get enough power and stay in S1 class. 700 horsepower. This has got less power than the Holden that is now the fastest car here, has less power than the Holden and weighs over a thousand pounds more. Now, power to weight ratio wise, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. Now, the only hope that this car has is to make it up through the corners, which it is actually quite good at. I will say that much. There is a surprising amount of grip in this it's not a big understeery car, as I was expecting. How fast or slow are we going? 155. That's about the slowest I think we've seen down there, about on par with the with the Jeep in terms of its uh, yeah, in terms of its sort of mid-speed acceleration. Of course, yeah, actual off-the-line launch always going to be very good when you've got all-wheel drive, you've got this bigger tires and a good amount of power. Always going to fly off of the line, but elsewhere is where we're going to get potential problems. So 201 miles an hour on that boost pad. We clonk down quite heavily. Yeah, okay, we've got big problems in that we are aero limited massively. Like We are massively restricted in what we can do because of the aerodynamics of the car. That's a uh, fun one to have to deal with. It is a surprisingly nice to drive vehicle though and I feel like we can probably get a half decent lap time it's certainly not going to get into the 32s we're not going to see it get into the 32s and change the Holden we're looking at 35s is probably the uh, most optimistic that I can be with this one uh, again around the Bentley around the Jeep sort of uh, sort of time. We're certainly not bad through the turns. I feared we might be a little bit of a handful, uh, a little bit, well, awful, quite frankly, but uh, 148 is too fast. It's worth a try, uh, <laughs> because I think 140, though, shouldn't be too much of a problem. But in many ways, this drives very similarly, similarly to the, uh, <laughs> to the Jeep. Carries about the same sort of corner speed, if a little bit more, I think. Helped, I suspect, by the uh, lower centre, slightly lower centre of mass. But similar sort of struggles in terms of uh, acceleration. I think it's actually a little bit slower than the Jeep uh, in terms of uh, in terms of that, that mid-speed acceleration and around the around the loop. If we can't accelerate, having got a decent boost off of the second the second boost pad, you're always going to be in trouble. And there's just so much weight and so little power uh, dragging the car around the loop that oh, uh, well, that's not good. Because uh, now we're going to, yeah, we really need to get the 201 mile an hour launch off there because otherwise, oh, that's painfully slow. That is painfully, painfully slow around the loop. It's barely going to get 190. Uh, oh, that was a little bit ambitious. On the brakes by me. Uh, <laughs> just, a, just a tad on the ambitious side there. <laughs> I thought, oh, we're struggling for speed. We'll be all right. And then by the time my brain had readjusted to where I wanted to brake, it was way too late and that's a bounce off of the wall. We can, you'll be interested to know, be flat out through turn three absolutely flat out through turn three which uh, we are going slower in this car but it's a testament to the grip that it has and through turn four we can't quite be flat out through turn four this lap is always going to be a little bit dodgy because of the way that i went onto it because we bounced around the wall so might as well use this lap as a uh, exploratory run yeah because we weren't actually carrying as much momentum through that split section we would probably be okay to have kept it flat out through the next turn if we're doing like 148 miles an hour we can't turn in with that speed because we're not going to have the grip there whatsoever 155 the, the brakes are half decent 
for a car of, well, this size and this, this weight. They're not amazing though, so I probably shouldn't be too much of a moron when we come to the uh, the final the final corner. You've got to try and find some speed anywhere you can really with this fourth gear out of there. We'll do the trick. Okay, to the boost pads we head once more. Can we get a nice run off of it? No, because we were doing a wheelie. That's what we need in a two-ton car is some wheelieing to uh, <laughs> to occur. Oh, it's a so, so bloody slow around that uh, loop. Don't need to don't need to break at the flags, but also need to break before we get to the blue bit. That's a little bit better. Okay, that was a 37 something. It's still fairly scruffy. Uh, 35s might actually be a little bit ambitious as well, though. I think maybe uh, maybe 36. Who knows? I've pulled surprisingly quick lap times out of cars that I didn't think they could, and uh, struggled with others. So. Hey, you never know until you get everything spot on. It's so good through that first sector. We are right up with the, um, well, with the ghost flag falling overs and right up there with the, the Holden through the first sector because it's got the speed, it's got the grip to carry the speed through turn three and it's got the acceleration out of the first corners because of that all-wheel drive, uh, all-wheel drive traction essentially. And then it's just, it's all the way sort of through here. I don't think fourth was quite necessary. It was worth a try though. Yeah, it's just all of this this mid-speed acceleration is where every bit of lap time goes away. And it's probably not so far down here, because again, we've got good traction, good acceleration out of the crossover point. We are going to lose tremendous amounts of time in that, uh, in that loop, because it can't power itself around well enough. It hasn't got... It hasn't got enough power, essentially. We need about one and a half thousand horsepower in a car of this weight, I would reckon, to uh, to be okay around the uh, around the loop. That's the best run we've got off of the boost pad, 202 miles an hour. But we're just going to slip all the way down. We kept above 170 this time, which is better. Which is better. Uh, it's still not good enough. And then 192 miles. This is 30 miles an hour down on a front-wheel drive Dodge Dart. To put into context just how slow it is. A 36-1. That felt like a pretty good lap as well. Uh, where are we going to find any time? I don't know. I don't know where we're going to find much time. We were a little bit wide, I think, at this turn. Turn three. So if we're a bit neater this time around, maybe. Yeah, we are literally, I think, on par with the Holden through that first. No, I've been a stupid. I know I needed to carry more speed, and that's too much. Yeah, we are, we are very much on par with the uh, with the Holden through that first sector and with the with the ghost time through that first sector, but it's everywhere else where we get into trouble with the uh, with the regalia. I was I was expecting more power for the for the PI. I really thought we would be able to fully build this car. I mean, there are vehicles, plenty of vehicles, in fact, in this game that can't get to the top of S1 class. And they'll have more power than this and be a hell of a lot lighter than this. I guess all-wheel drive and the big tyres do tend to jump the PI up a fair bit, even though the car is very heavy. Uh, we've got big o well, so we've got big oversteer. We've got big... I didn't even know. We're weird steer. It just it, it was doing weird things and didn't have enough grip to chuck the car through that corner with all of the uh, all of the pace. We're going to bounce down against another 202 mile an hour launch. It's getting okay launches, but it's so irrelevant when... <laughs> when you get this little speed around the loop because cars like the Sierra, in fact, pretty much everything, even with bad launches, is quicker than this around that loop and I pushed it a little too hard into the final corner as well. It's a scruffy final lap that's definitely not going to be quicker. An interesting an interesting vehicle to drive and it's a something different. It's a, a, a new sort of addition to Horizon 3. It's free to everybody who has Horizon 3, so... Can't really complain at a, uh, at a three, free car. Sorry, I can English. Uh, just about. We do donuts? Not really. We kind of do these big... There we go. That's more like it. Um, it's certainly a uh, beast of a car, but it's not that quick. Good quarter grip. Actually does carry good, good quarter speed, and its sort of apex speeds are comparable with some of the best uh, handling cars we've had, the likes of the Mercedes 190E. And so on. It is, it is right up there, you know, with the Commodore as well, I think, through some of the corners. 
there's no acceleration getting away and it can't do the final loop without losing tremendous amounts of speed. And that means it's lap time of 36.1 is going to put it a fair way down the order. It is going to go into a 28th place. It beats Super Impress. It does beat the Twin Mill, Jaguar, Hexies, Challenger, Hellcat, and so on. It is four tenths of a second down on the uh, Bentley Continental Super Sport, a car that kind of fairly similar, fairly similar levels of power between the, the pair of them. So, I mean, competitiveness-wise, is actually uh, around there with similar vehicles. I mean, it feels a lot slower than the <laughs> than the Bentley. That straight line speed is terrible, but corner speed can make up for it to an extent. Yeah, surprisingly good through the turns. This almighty, almighty boat. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was always likely to struggle around this circuit where you just can't get enough power to uh, compensate for the huge amount of weight. Shame. I would like to have seen it with uh, with more power in this uh, in this class because you might be able, if, it, if it had got, you know, well over a 1,000 horsepower, it might have been able to set a uh, pretty decent lap time around here because there is plenty of grip to uh, go around. But there we go. That is a going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time... Uh, goodbye.